Okay, we begin our tour through Rob Beezer's linear algebra book by asking the question, what is linear algebra? So you can read this discussion here. The idea is that linear algebra deals with a certain particular type of equation that has a certain form. And we can see certain examples here. y equals mx plus b. You remember from high school algebra that this is the equation of a line. Okay. Uh, the variables are y and x, and the coefficients are m and b. m has the interpretation of slope, b has the interpretation of y-intercept. All right, so that's a very simple example of a linear equation. Here's another example of a linear equation. ax plus by plus cz equals d. Here a, b, c, and d are constants, and the variables are x, y, and z. Now, if you could plot this equation in three dimensions, of course, here you'd have to get one variable in terms of the other two. I could solve this equation for z and plot z as a function of x and y. It turns out that if you were able to plot that in three dimensions, you'd get a plane, which is something flat, kind of like a line. It just has higher dimension. We think of line as a one-dimensional object, plane as a two-dimensional object. But still, the object described by this equation is something flat. So we call something flat, we call that linear. Okay. Now, when we talk about linear algebra, you don't just have lines and planes, you have things called hyperplanes. You may have more than three variables, you might have 20 or 100 variables. Uh, so, in some ways, that's very hard to visualize, but in some ways, the same principles work for these large number of variables that work for these small number of variables. And some of the same techniques are used to solve these complicated equations that can be used to solve these simple equations. The other thing that we'll get to is that here we're just looking at one equation here, y equals mx plus b, or one equation here, ax plus by plus cz equals d. When you talk, do linear algebra, you look at systems of equations. You look at multiple equations. And we'll see some examples of that as we go along. OK, so here are some other examples of linear equations. Notice that you have uh, every term in this equation is a variable times a constant. Well, of course, this term here has no variable. But either you have to have a constant term, or you have every term is a variable times a constant. Okay. And it makes the point here that this is another kind of algebra. You're still doing manipulation of equations. You have similar rules that you had in high school algebra, but you're going to learn some very new techniques in dealing with these systems of equations. All right, now it's impossible to underestimate how important this is in practice. You see this in production, in engineering, all the time. So here's one example that uh, uh, Rob works through. And uh, let's uh, read it. Well, you can read it a little bit carefully on your own. Uh, what, what you're actually doing is you're a company, and you make three different products from three different ingredients, you make tra trail mix. So you have three different mixes of these three different ingredients, and you sell these mixes at three different prices. So go ahead and read through all the information. The information is stored in this table. So you need to learn how to be able to read tables like this. Here are the three ingredients, raisins, peanuts, and chocolate. Here are the three products, bulk trail mix, standard trail mix, and fancy trail mix. Okay. Now there are costs involved. Uh, there's, a, there's a cost for uh, raisins per kilogram, cost for peanuts per kilogram, and cost for chocolate per kilogram. There's also storage allotment. You can't store more than 380 kilograms of raisins, 500 kilograms of peanuts, and 620 kilograms of chocolate. Okay? The cost for making the trail mix is given by these three numbers. And these three numbers can be computed from uh, these costs and these numbers here. So that's one of the exercises that you'll have. Now, as a practical factory manager, you're going to want to figure out what mix of products are you going to compute in order to maximize your profit. You want to use up all of your storage capacity, 
and, and make a combination of three products and get a good profit from that. Okay, so you're going to have various equations. You're going to have one equation related to the amount of storage that you have. You're going to have another equation related to the uh, price, the, the amount of money that you can make by selling these things. Okay, so in order to make equations, we need to have variables, and the variables that are defined here are B, S, and F. B is the amount of bulk trail mix in kilograms that's produced. S is the amount of standard trail mix in kilograms that's produced, and F is the amount of fancy uh, trail mix in kilograms that's produced. All right. Now, it makes sense that you can't produce a negative amount of trail mix, so you're going to have these quantities have to be positive. Okay. Now, uh, you can't make an uh, arbitrary amount of all of these things. You're limited by, the, uh, by, your, by your raw materials. This first equation, for instance, gives you the limitation imposed, this first one here, this gives you the limitation imposed by the amount of raisins that you have. Okay? You can only store 380 kilograms of raisins. Okay? So, and each kilogram of bulk uses a certain amount of raisins. Each kilogram of standard uses a certain amount of raisins. Each kilogram of fancy uses a certain amount of raisins. Well, how many kilograms of raisins goes into one kilogram of bulk? Let's think about that. How many kilograms of raisins goes into one kilogram of bulk? Well, if you read across here, here you have uh, bulk, you have seven kilograms of raisins mixed with six kilograms of peanuts mixed with two kilograms of chocolate. Okay, and that's the amount that goes into one batch of bulk. Seven, seven kilograms of raisins, six kilograms of peanuts, two kilograms of chocolate. Okay, now how, mu how many kilograms in one batch of bulk? Well, you have to add up these kilograms. Seven raisins plus six plus two, that's going to give me 15. So one batch of bulk is 15 kilograms. So when we go back to my original question, how many kilograms of raisins in one kilogram of bulk? Right? This line shows us that in a batch of 15 kilograms, I have 7 kilograms of raisins. Okay? But if I want the amount of raisins in one kilogram, that's only 1 15th of a batch. Right? So that means that 7 15ths kilograms of raisins goes into one kilogram of bulk. Okay. If you wanted to work that out for standard and fancy, you'd get the same thing. It turns out that in each case, a batch consists of 15 kilograms. So one kilogram of standard has 6 fifteenths kilograms of raisins. One kilogram of fancy has 2 fifteenths kilograms of raisins. Okay. So how many kilograms of raisins total are you using? Well, for each kilogram of bulk, you use 7 fifteenths kilograms. For each kilogram of standard, you use 6 fifteenths. For each kilogram of fancy, you use 2 fifteenths. Okay? So the total number of kilograms of raisins that you're using is 7 fifteenths times the number of kilograms of bulk, plus 6 fifteenths times the number of kilograms of standard, plus 2 fifteenths times the number of kilograms of fancy. Okay? So this left-hand side is the total number of raisins that's used to make the three different types of trail mix. But we also know that we can only store 380 kilograms, so that cannot be bigger than 380 raisins. And since we want to use all of our storage capacity, we set it equals here. Okay. Now you can do similarly for peanuts and for chocolate. For peanuts, you would look at the second column. For chocolate, you'd look at the third column. Right? And you get these relationships that relate the amount of bulk uh, st um, standard and fancy trail mix and the limitations involved because of the raw materials. Now it turns out that here we now have three equations and we have three unknowns. And that may be familiar to you that when you have three equations, three unknowns, you can solve for the three unknowns. Well, at least you can sometimes. We'll see in many cases where you can't uh, but it, but uh, in many cases, you can solve for the three unknowns. And this is the solution that they came up with. We'll see methods later for finding the solution of a system of equations like this. Okay. Now, since we're running a company, we're interested in how much money we can make out of this. 
So to find out how much money we make out of this, we go up to this column here. Look at these two columns here. This is the cost per kilogram of bulk. This is the, then this is the sale price. So the profit per kilogram is going to be the difference between the sale price per kilogram minus the cost per kilogram. Okay. So that's where these come here. This is the profit for per, per kilogram of bulk. This is the profit per kilogram of standard. And this is the profit per kilogram of fancy. If we multiply by the number of bulk kilograms, number of standard kilograms, number of fancy kilograms, this gives us our total profit. So you can see that this is really a practical problem. I can compute the amount of, of uh, product I can, I can produce. I can also compute my, uh, my total profit. Okay. So you will have one uh, problem to do down here that relates to that. Here it asks you to compute the costs per kilogram of each variety. So in the first table, for instance, it says the cost per kilogram of bulk the trail mix is 369. You need to show where does that come from? Where does this number come from? And similarly, show where this number comes from and where this number comes from. You can compute these three numbers from the information that's given here. Okay. So that's all I'm going to say about this first section.